Hey guys, this is Max and Maxworks, and today we're doing another Maxworks garage review. Uh, today it's going to be a 2001 WR250F that's been converted for supermoto use. So as you can see, it's got supermoto wheels. It's got just everything it needs to be street legal. I've actually taken the horn off at the moment uh, after we passed inspection yesterday. But as you can see, it's got no gauge cluster, no nothing, and it's kickstart only. So we're actually going to be uh, riding this bike around and we're talking a little bit about it. Here's the starting procedure. Basically, you want to swing, swing this out, kickstart it out. You want to push down until you feel that hard spot. Pull in, go down a little bit more. So this is one of the problems with the WR250. Um, it's actually not big enough or heavy enough to trigger the gate at my apartment. So we have to do it the old fashioned way. So if you do live in an apartment and you have a gate similar to this one, might be something you'd want to consider. I'm a big guy, I'm about 250 pounds, so I'm not really expecting much out of this in terms of just straight up. I mean, in terms of just straight up power wheeling, it's not really happening. Uh, if I yank up on it, it might do it, but for a bike that's making about 25 to 30 horses, um, this is really the sort of performance that you could pretty much expect. Uh, a lighter guy is going to... There we go. I mean, it'll, it'll power wheel you up just a little bit. You know, you can hit that little, little jump right there. And... It's good stuff. Good stuff. Definitely a good little bike. So... Let's, let's talk about, um, let's get out into the street here or whatever, and then we can talk a little bit about ergonomics and whatnot. Um, wow, that was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. So this bike will go up over curbs. Definitely. Um, so this bike is a 2001 WR250F, uh, and in 2001 this bike was primarily made as a um, sort of street ready, uh, dual sporty dirt bike. It's really a dirt bike with a headlight and a tail light. Um, but at the time it was, it was a great business model and these things are awesome. Uh, let's talk about the power plant here for a little bit. Um, it's it's nice and meaty and torquey, and it, it really never leaves you uh, never really leaves you wanting for more power. And like I said, I'm a big guy. I'm about 250 pounds, and when I'm riding this, yeah, it's I mean it's not my KTM, but at the same time, for a, for a 250, it's definitely got quite a bit of balls, um, and doesn't doesn't really have any any issues in terms of power. So for those 25 or 30 horses that you get, uh, you really you really are pretty set. Uh, in terms of power adding mods, uh, there, there are a few basically freebie bolt-ons. You can mess around with the carburetor a little bit. Like you can hear that it surges a little bit at idle, so I probably need to address um, some of the some of the idle idle air circuit.
issues that this bike has, but really there's not a whole lot that you can do uh, to this bike to really get much more performance out of it, except for a turbo kit. Um, but you don't really need more performance. This bike's not about performance. This bike's not about not about doing you know 100 mile an hour down the highway. It's about having fun right here on the city streets. Uh, and like I said, I don't even have a speedometer, so it tends to not matter. In terms of ride comfort, uh, this is definitely um, not as stiff as my KTM. So. Um, a little it's a little spongier a little looser but like I said even with my fat ass on it, it it never it never really gives you the indication that you know you're overtaxing the suspension uh, I've actually had one of these things off-road in full dirt trim and it's just an excellent all-around mid-level bike and if I had to recommend a starter dirt bike to anybody I would say screw the TTR or whatever series that makes like 10 horses Get one of these, you're gonna be super duper happy with it because it's just like a little a little tractor motor. It doesn't, you know, it just keeps going. And the suspension is fairly advanced and, and, and fairly good, and so you don't you don't get that this bike doesn't feel cheap, is kind of what I'm getting at. you you really feel like you're um, riding a good entry-level dirt bike. Um, and I think that's awesome. There are a few issues. Uh, the first is that your gas tank is super tiny, but you know there are ways to address that. Obviously, the lack of gauge cluster and proper headlight are going to throw some people. Uh, some people aren't going to like that. Um, there's a lot of extra stuff. Uh, so there's a bunch of stuff to do with the carburetor that you can adjust to uh, basically make sure that you get uh, a little bit smoother performance. But um, um, if you buy an 03 or later, they're going to have uh, the ability to be electric start. Uh, also in 03, you have an auto decomp uh, cam, and as a result, you don't have this compression decompression lever. You don't have to use it. Um, you can also throw the, uh, the uh, 03 cam into this bike without any, any real issue. It bolts right up. But, um, I haven't, I mean, I just got this bike, but I don't really feel the need to get rid of the auto decompressor, uh, or to get the auto decompressor rather than the decomp lever. Uh, to me, it just adds to the character of the bike. It's not an issue. Um, Electric Star would have been nice, but it's going to add weight. And so, another thing is, don't think just because the 03 and later bikes had e-start that you can convert an early gen. You can't, because the cases are different. Or rather, I mean, you can, but it's going to cost a crap ton of money and not be not be cost effective in the least to do an e-start conversion on this bike. So, if you want an electric bike, an electric start bike, just get one from the factory. It's, it's going to be worth, worth it in the long run. some more maintenance on this bike, get a few uh, few mods in probably, and um, we're also going to put on a, a Trail Tech uh, kit for the front, um, or rather a Trail Tech gauge kit, uh, another Vapor like I have on my KTM, so that uh, we can basically keep... Uh, So, 
kind of in conclusion, if you buy 2001 through basically 2013 WR250, it's going to be fundamentally the same motorcycle. In 03, you're going to pick up auto decompression as well as the option for electric start um, on the F. And then I think at some point, like maybe 05, the F gets electric start by default and then. Uh, and then uh, you can get the R, which is going to be kickstart only. Let's see. But all in all, if you're looking for an entry-level bike and maybe you want a dual sport, but you're not looking to do long highway branches, you just want to roll around town and, and do a little dual sporting in and around town, this is really an excellent bike, especially if you're not looking to spend a whole lot of money or you don't have a whole lot of experience. This is definitely a great place to start uh, because this bike's going to be really forgiving. It's never, it's never going to want to try to eat your lunch. It's never going to want to try to fuck you up uh, like a big bore bike will. Um, there are, there are some, some tuning issues. Uh, you really want to, want to play around with the carburetor and stuff. To be honest with you, I've been riding this around for a couple of days now, and to be honest, it's an amazing excellent bike uh, you know if I hadn't already built the KTM as my primary dual or my primary supermoto I would probably be pretty content to just own this especially for the price I paid for it so all in all if you're looking for an entry-level bike you want you know a supermoto or a dual sport you basically want a dirt bike that you can take on the street without you know yourself in an awkward position with the law or with an insurance company or whatever uh, and by the way insurance on this bike for me was free I literally added it to my policy and the rate didn't go up uh, the previous owner had this as the only bike on his policy he was paying about $50 a year uh, so insurance on this is basically next to nothing um, and it's an excellent bike and there's not really much else I can say about it other than it's it's a great little bike and and it's and it's good for I would say it's good for the guy who's not really interested on in going on the highway ever. If you're interested in maybe doing some trails, doing some wheelies, doing some supermoto, maybe a little light stunning, all of that right on the money. If you want to be able to go on the highway to reach your trails, reach your friends, reach whatever. More than like one exit, I would say you'd probably be better off looking at a 450 or a 500 or a 650 or something of that nature. Because uh, this little 250 is not like if you have a gear to the point where it's going to do okay on the highway, you're really not going to want to ride it on the street and you know, vice versa. So, I guess in conclusion, this is an awesome bike. Uh, if you've been thinking about buying one, you should because they're awesome.